Right. Yes, go. I can see that. Okay. Yes. So I think we can start now. Mm. And Moon, please help me share the slide. Mm. Okay. Can everyone see Moon's slide? Oh, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I guess it's a good morning and also good evening. Um, hi everyone and welcome greetings from a border. My name is Julie and I am the coordinator from a border. And today I'm very happy to have all of you to be on the trip, Go Nam 2022. Um, if you are here for the very first time, then you might ask, what is Go Nam 2022? Well, Go Nam means coming to Vietnam and Go Nam 2022 is a series of online seminars that we organize to provide you with local culture immersion and also study abroad opportunities in Vietnam. Yeah, and we have six virtual flights in total. Yes, and last week we finished the flight to explore the Vietnamese cuisine. And today's flight, who is this for? This flight is for students who are interested in internships related to engineering and medical. And some suggested measures for this kind of internships are um, engineering related, IT, computer science, applied science, and healthcare. Mm. And if you are excited and ready to see, to see our roadmap for today's trip, uh, please give me a hard reaction on Zoom. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, thank you. And this is the agenda for today's session. We will start our journey today with a question, internship in Vietnam, what is this like? And then we will explore what, what opportunities are available and the program fee. And finally, we will share with you how to best plan your Go Nam 2022. So are you unclear about the agenda? Okay, great. Uh, for an effective meeting, please turn on your video for the best interaction. Uh, mute yourself unless speaking. If you do want to share uh, with us or if you have any question, please unmute yourself, raise hands or send up messages in the chat box. Okay, so now I would love to kickstart our journey with a brief introduction about a broader. Yeah. At a broader, the passion about supporting the local community development has become the main drive for our work since it was established. And the main stakeholders of the local community is young Vietnamese students who do not have opportunities to gain international exposures. And, and to carry out our mission, we act as a bridge to connect local students with the world by bringing international students to Vietnam via our educational programs such as internships, customized faculty-led semester exchange and service learning. And so far, we have been helping more than 1,000 local students to have the international experiences through our programs and hosting international students from more than 20 countries in the world. And when each intern um, joining our programs, I believe he or she would have very unique experiences. And to help you understand more about internships in Vietnam, what is this like? I would like to invite you to listen to our intern stories. Uh, and now I'm very excited to introduce our alumni, Alison, Martin, and Ian. They were all our former in-person interns in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. And please join me in a big applause to welcome our guest speakers for today's session. Thank you for coming. And, and we, can, we cannot get it started without a host for this session. So welcome you on stage, our host for the guest speaker talk, my colleague, uh, Moon Lei. Yes. Yeah, so nice. And yeah, and hi again, I am Moon. Uh, you can call me Lian, uh, it's my Vietnamese name. And thanks Julie for your great introduction as usual. Uh, last session, we talked about uh, internships in Vietnam, focusing on social sciences and liberal arts. If you miss it, feel free to check out our social media platforms to watch the recording. 
And following the topic, internship abroad, develop your global career. Today, we're going to have an insightful and fascinating sharing from our three lovely guest speakers who had the privilege uh, to have an experience uh, here in Vietnam before um, the pandemic began. And um, if you have any question, feel free to uh, unmute yourself. Uh, or if you're shy, you can drop your questions in the chat box. I'll make sure your questions will be answered, all right? Alison, Ian, and Martin, it's so wonderful to have three of you guys uh, here with us today. And I hope that you guys have already had dinner to start the talk. And yeah, just wondering, Alison, if you were here now, what would your go-to Vietnamese dish be? Say that one more time. What would my go-to Vietnamese dish? Dish? dish yeah, dish. Ah, <laughs> my, uh, I think I told you this earlier, the, the uh, bun dao mum tum. Is that how I, I always yeah, forget the mom. pronunciation, but. Is that the oh, crab soup? That's the, um, it's like a shrimp paste where you dip uh, like tofu and I, I forget the names of the, the other meat that you dip in there, but I think it's delicious. Um, restaurants in the US don't make it because it smells too much <laughs> and they don't think that the American people will, will enjoy it, but I, I very much enjoy it and miss it. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. And you know, in like I know that the taste of bún đậu mắm tôm is pretty strong for foreigners, even for Vietnamese. That's why, yeah, yeah. How about Martin? What you what food remind you about Vietnam? Um, so there's this thing called uh, nem lui hue, which is like uh, mm -hmm. oh, it's so good. Like uh, rice, how do you call this rice paper or something like that? Um, you have the meat inside uh, and you have a bunch of other things and you wrap it up. Um, it's so good. And there's no Vietnamese food here. I'm from Ecuador and there's, I mean, there's one restaurant that I found and they don't, they, they claim they're a Vietnamese food restaurant, but not really. Like once you've tried the real thing, you, you know, it's, <laughs> this is another, this is different thing. So yeah, that that dish I miss a lot. It was really good. Mm. Yeah, really good one. Thank you, Martin. So we have bún đậu mắm tôm. We have nem lụi hoa. And how about you, Ian? Uh, I would say my favorite dish dish is um chả giò. Chả giò. Um, so uh, basically it's fried fried um spring rolls, deep fried spring mm. rolls, with um various meats and vegetables on the inside. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big foodie. So all the name you guys mentioned here, I love that. I love it. Okay, so now we have Nguyen Đậu Mắm Tôm, Nem Lụi Hơ, and uh, Gia Yo. Yeah, just a little bit uh, warm up before our talk. Uh, that's so wonderful. And uh, thank you again for accepting our invitation to be our guest speakers. And uh, I am pretty sure that uh, our, um, our students have a lot of questions for you, like uh, what are you guys doing currently? How was your experience during your internship here in Vietnam? And as for starters, let's get to know a little bit more about each other. Uh, so could you give a brief introduction about yourself, uh, Alison, the most beautiful one here? <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see, so I did my internship in was it, 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and just as a background, I was at Loyola University in Chicago, still living in Chicago now. And uh, Loyola actually had a, a study abroad program um, that started in January. So I went on that, which was based in, in District 10 of Ho Chi Minh City. And so that was from January to April. And then at that point, I did not want to go home because I was having such a good time and had learned had been able to learn language, uh, sociology, a bunch of culture, history. And then I came across a broader and um, my major was biology and I wanted to do something medical. So saw that there was medical internship, uh, applied, and then brought me, brought me to you guys. Um, and yeah, then the internship, I 
obviously I could talk about for forever, but uh, I think just to give an overview, like I really, right now I'm actually, I'm in getting a master's in nursing school. So it kind of all played in together and it's really helped me in the sense that it, it opened up to thinking more about cultural differences in healthcare and the way that specifically nursing is approached and uh, the interaction between different healthcare workers um, across the world and, and here, so. Yeah, lovely Alishan. Yeah, so next one would be Ian, how about you? Okay, so just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I'm actually half Vietnamese myself. My mom is from there. And at the time I was doing um, a bachelor's degree at Tulane University. Uh, it's a private university in New Orleans. Um, I was double majoring in international relations and Russian. And at the time, um, during my junior year, um, so for those in Vietnam, that's uh, year three. Um, I had actually just gotten back from Russia from doing um, a language immersion program there. And I was looking for opportunities for the following summer to uh, gain some work experience. And I think I also have this love of traveling and I had never been to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, and one day I found um, a broader, well, at the time it was called Student Exchange Vietnam, um, but I found this organization and they were arranging, they, they arranged um, internships for international students. Um, so I ended up getting in contact with one of their coordinators and told them a little bit about myself, my background, and they were able to get me an internship at the University of Economics in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, it's yeah. one of the, it's one of Vietnam's best, uh, probably one Vietnam's premier university for business and economics. And I was working in their Department of International Relations and Research Administration. Um, here in the United States, it's all it's pretty much like your study abroad office. So what I was doing there. Um, I was um, I was managing their social media, uh, promoting content, also um, helping the university um, develop brochures, mar other marketing materials to um, promote its various um, study abroad programs and uh, student exchanges with other host universities around the world. Um, additionally, I also greeted um, delegations of foreign students who visited the university. So I had the opportunity to um, uh, greet two uh, groups of students from Thailand and one group from Malaysia. And I also took them around the city. Um, I, how, how am I on time? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I can go on and on. I think that's just a good start. I can, I can talk more later. Yeah, we can talk a little bit more later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, last but certainly not least, um, Martin. Hmm. Yeah, so um, I was in Vietnam for in 2018 as well, uh, like Allison. Um, I was working at the time. I was I'm from Ecuador. I was at the time I was working for the for the government. Um, I was working for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here in my country. But I knew I wanted to go to Asia and experience. Um, the nonprofit sector specifically. Uh, so I found um, a broader or student exchange Vietnam at the time, and they helped me find this uh, internship at, um, at a local NGO in Hanoi uh, that works with children. It was everything I dreamt of. It was so great. Um, I was doing pretty similar things to what Ian was doing. So I was managing social media, uh, writing reports for, for donors, uh, meeting with people with, with pot potential donors, um, hosting groups of, of international students who were uh, visiting the, this NGO. Um, there were groups from Singapore and groups from Australia mainly. Um, and yeah, I, I attended a several, Christmas fairs as well, because that was, I, I was from July till December of 2018. So uh, I got to attend some Christmas fairs, talk about the, this charity. And um, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. It was beautiful. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, you all for your introduction.
And you know, an internship abroad, whether in person or remote, uh, would present each individual a, a variety of learning opportunities. And I'm sure that um, we are eager to know more about your journey. So are you guys ready to spare us the juicy details? If yes, please give me a heart. Oh, plenty of hearts here. I love that, thank you. And now let's go back in time to the beginning of your internship. Um, Martin, I just wonder like, why did you choose to go abroad at that time and what led you to that decision? So th this is a kind of like a funny story, I think. Um, so we get a lot of American, like we are under the American influence here, right? So all I knew about Vietnam was the Vietnam War. Vietnam War you see in movies and that's all you hear. And like, I really wanted to know because how, how the, the culture really was and what's this country like and what are the people there? like and i don't know i think that drove me to to look for something in vietnam and that's how i find found you guys and yeah that's i think that's why i chose the country and i i it was like the best decision ever because uh people there were so so friendly so open um from day one i felt like homes but especially where I was working, um, they were so like welcoming. And uh, this is like an anecdote just to, to show, illustrate this. Um, the first week I got there was close to the end of the summer. So they had this um, festival or something with, with the children. They would all do, um, it was like a talent show. And they had these, there was a band of, oh, I think I lost you guys. Did you still hear me? You're back. Sorry, Martin. sorry. I think my internet's a bit um, down. Um, so yeah, th they were doing this talent show and there was this band called Viet and Tay, because there was um, Vietnamese people and, and foreigners. And from the first day I was there, they told me like, do you play an instrument? I said, yeah, I do play the guitar. Okay, so do you want to be in this band? And I was like, sure. And from that day on, we were like, well, we, we performed at that first show uh, with the kids, with uh, some English teachers and myself, and then, from then on, like we would play together all the time, and it was yeah, they were so so nice to me, and uh, that that's something I I think uh, is a characteristic of uh, Vietnamese culture. So yeah, that's yeah, that's that's what I can share. Mm. So uh, what I mm, heard about you, like being curious and hungry for knowledge. Like with the urge to explore more by your what you 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 had done with them, I love that message. And how were you, uh, Ian? Um. So just to uh, just to confirm, just to um explain why I chose Vietnam as my internship. Yeah. yeah at that okay. Time. Um. So when um as I had mentioned before, um I had just gotten back from Russia from a language immersion program in uh, August 2015. And I had already started looking for other opportunities for the following summer, internship, something along those lines. And I had come across um, a broader, well, at the time it was called Student Exchange Vietnam. And it looked really interesting. I had never been to Vietnam before. And I figured this could be a chance to finally visit Vietnam and get some good internship experience. Um, because I wasn't sure when I might have an opportunity to do this in the future after uh, finishing um, my university. So I got in touch with one of their um, coordinators, with one of your program coordinators, um, told them a bit about my background, and uh, they were able to get me a position um, working as an intern at the University of Economics in Ho Chi Minh City. 
uh, which is um, one of the premier universities for business and economics. And at the time, I, um, so I was working in their Department of International Relations and Research Administration, which in America is similar to the study abroad office. And I was doing that um, from May through August 2016. Yeah, and I, cool. I briefly discussed about some of my job duties before. Mm -hmm. So I think that oh, we only live once, so we, we only regret what we never do. That's very really lovely. Yeah, please just go ahead and grab your opportunity whenever you, you, you have. And no, yeah. I have no regrets at all going to Vietnam. Lovely. And do you have any like um, memorable moments you would like to mention about your host organization or your host family, Ian? So um, the host organization, so at the time from, I understand that you have a main office in uh, well, Demon City now. At the time, you didn't have one there. Um, mm -hmm. So I remember um, Ma and uh, the other program coordinator, ha, they came down a few times from uh, Hanoi to um, visit with some of the other interns here. And I remember we would go to various restaurants whenever they came down to visit. Um, was very was very enjoyable. And I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, the organization, with how well organized your, um, your organization is. Yeah, thank you for sharing it. And yeah, mm, I have a question uh, for you from our participant, uh, send your, our social media. So do you have any trouble with the language? Can I intern in Vietnam if I don't understand Vietnamese? Uh, uh, so um, did I, are you asking, did I have trouble with language for my regular job? Yes. Um, so what I was doing, since a lot of my job was working with like international students or promoting uh, university materials for basically their international relations department, um, most of my work was done in English. Um, but to answer your question, was Vietnamese language a problem? Um, so I speak a little bit of Vietnamese. Um, my mom's from there originally, but I'm not fluent. I'm not a native speaker. So there were some language barriers, um, although there were a few small language barriers, but they didn't prohibit me from being able to do my job. Um, but also where I was working, mo almost everyone in my department spoke English. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. Mm, Alicia, I know you have an incredible connection with the locals here. Like you like Vietnamese. So how was your experience with them? And what are some things that you have learned about the local culture here in Vietnam? Let's see. Uh, well, I feel like I could go, go off on like so many tangents of <laughs> little stories. But like I said, my initial, like when I went to Vietnam, it was, it was through a different program, but I stayed since I loved it so much. And I feel like my initial impression, um, I know you can see pictures on brochures and everything. And I'm trying to think back of what I thought of, of Vietnam before I actually stepped foot in the country. Cause you see these motorbikes, you're like, oh, this is so, such a foreign city. But the second I, I stepped off the plane and like spent one or one or two days, I felt like completely at home. Um, I don't know if it was, it was just the energy of the people um, just being so friendly, open. I know you'd walk down the street and I know they're probably surprised to see like a tall white girl walking around um but you just give them a smile and they want to come talk to you and I loved that just the openness and like the eye contact um and then I'm trying to think some other interactions like my my host family was wonderful I had initially lived in district 10 through the other program I did but then um you know you guys set me up with a host family right in say district three. Um, and that was, that was wonderful. Only like there was a mom, two kids, a dad, and then a cook who spoke only Vietnamese, but she wanted to talk to me the most. She would uh, sit me down, ask me what I wanted to eat. And I could speak like a little bit of Vietnamese having learned it, I had to take uh, a class through school. So I would, I'd sit down and 
she'd make me food. One day I told her I wanted to go to the market at 5 a.m. and she came knocking on my door. So that was quite the experience. And then she also thought that she, she wanted to watch TV with me. And, and the only thing that was looked like it could be US was like, uh, like, um, like wrestling or something. The, what is it called? WWE? Is it WWE? I don't know. But it was, I was like, this is not what we watch. <laughs> um, but overall, that kind of just shows like how, how open she was. She bought me 21 roses for my 21st birthday, which I spent in Vietnam. Um, and so all those little actions and, and more really made the experience what it was. Um, I don't know if I'm missing out on part of the question there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what are something you have learned about the local culture here in Vietnam? The local culture. Um, I think other than everyone's being pretty friendly, everyone also, they don't make a big deal about the little things. I know, especially in all our culture today, it's like one little thing will set you off and it'll ruin your day. And I remember I, I read back some of the things I wrote about Vietnam and how I was talking to a Vietnamese friend and I was like, Hey, like you can kind of just see like with the traffic patterns and everything, especially in Ho Chi Minh city, it's amazing. People don't get angry every time someone cuts you off because you got motorbikes going all over, you're bumping each other, but you just, you brush it off. You, you go along your way. Like, it's just a tiny little thing. If, if you got mad about every little bump and every little time someone cut you off or almost hit you, like you would have a, a terrible day. So I feel like that translates to their society and culture as well, that you don't let the little things get to you. So maybe that contributes to kind of more relaxed environment, or at least what I, um, at least what I witnessed when I was there, so. Yeah, that's lo lovely. Yeah, I, I really love you guys sharing about uh, language and about the local culture and what you have learned from Ian and Allison as well. And I totally agree with you all, like communication is the key. Whatever you are or whether you come from, and especially when you work in a post-culture environment, like communicating with your colleagues and the locals in Vietnam. What I have picked up here, like you feel Vietnam like your home and uh, yeah, Vietnam like your home. It's like, I think it's all about your mindset. It's what you think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm, back to Martin. I know that since your internship was based in Hanoi and you already have visited Ho Chi Minh City before, could you share like, what you feel are some of the lifestyle differences between the two cities compared to uh, Alison and Ian have to share? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I feel like Hanoi mm -hmm. is a bit more traditional, I would say. I, I only spend like a weekend or probably three days in Ho Chi Minh City, so I didn't get to experience a lot. Of it, but I would say um, I was in the very, I think it was District One, where you have all the, these streets with all the restaurants and all the bars in Ho Chi Minh City, and that felt very like kind of Western. I don't know. Um, whereas in in Hanoi, I remember the first, I, I arrived um, in the evening, and I remember I I got a taxi to the place I was I was gonna live in. And so he dropped me off at some street and well, it was Tanduk Tan Street, maybe you know it, um, where the Temple of Literature is, but I didn't leave on the street. It, like I had to go through an alley. I had to walk like for five to 10 minutes through the alley to get to the, to the house I was gonna live in. And that was so kind of shocking to me a little bit because I was like, this doesn't look safe at all. <laughs> and it was like, I was alone. It was like 11 PM and it was just my initial thought, but then I realized it, it's super fine. It's super common to, to live in these alleys. And I remember I called the guy that was hosting me and he came out to the street. 
he he walked me through these these plays and in the evening it was super quiet just like like any alley and i remember the next morning it was so full of people like you had the i remember there was a like a barber there like he didn't have a shop he was just on the street you know like cutting hair and cutting beards and doing doing his thing and then there was people selling vegetables and it was like so much going on and it was it was so amazing a bit um i i didn't know what to make of it at the, be the beginning but then you just learn to appreciate it i think yeah i i, I spoke more more about hanoi i don't really know if, if it was the same in in ho chi minh city but that's something i really liked like i live in an alley i it was it was kind of cool i would say mm, yeah thank you lee you, you you read my mind yeah i'm glad you remember all that that's so lovely yeah and yeah for now like i know that you guys have been through lots of things like good uh but all i think all the good and uh, i think it's maybe some of the ups and downs during the way along the way but like, can you can each of you mention one challenge you faced and how you overcame it during your internships well i can start um so i remember the very first day that i of my internship it was all going it was going great and then i remember maybe it was this the second day initially i was um I met up with a doctor who I was introduced to. We went to like the, the ER area and I'm just, I'm just following them. They're asking me like why I'm here. And I'm like, well, I'm doing an internship. And uh, anyway, we, we go to the ER. I kind of get juggled around to different like doctors um, and end up with like a random group of students. And so that was initially kind of just figuring out like, okay, who's going to, who's going to show me around here? um like no one quite knew what to do with me <laughs> initially eventually we all got it figured out but i think in that initial instance it was really just kind of trying to not feel like as not feel awkward or not feel like ah oh, this isn't going to work out because like i don't know who i'm where i'm supposed to be or, or who's supposed to be like watching me or teaching me um but in a way like that opened up different doors for me because it really made me have to like get out of my comfort zone and go walk up and be like hey like do you speak English like I want to learn stuff like can you show me something or I, I ended up meeting these there were tons of medical students there and they all wanted to practice English with me and so I heard them saying something in Vietnamese and I responded in Vietnamese they were talking about how old I was um and i walked by them and i heard it and i just like responded in vietnamese and they were all like taken aback like oh she can she knows what we're saying <laughs> so i created friends with them and then they showed me around and they showed me different things so it was and they also like ended up speaking some english um so i guess that shows how like a difficulty ended up opening different doors i guess the other thing was the hospitals just trying to get around because the layout is is pretty different, um, especially the Children's Hospital in, in Ho Chi Minh City. It was I guess, a, built by the French um, when they occupied Vietnam. Open air, uh, it's just like not nothing that I was really expecting. Um, and and all the signs are in Vietnamese. And and one day I'm told, oh, meet at this department, and I'm like, I have no idea where I'm going. So. I, I just had to take it one step at a time, look at the signs. Thankfully, I knew a few like different words here and there, pull up your translate. Um, if anything, just like learning how to take like deep breaths and knowing you'll, you'll figure it out. It'll be an adventure. <laughs> yeah, lots of lesson learned here after hearing you. Um, like go out of your comfort zone to have an opening door. Is like my quote for today. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, Mun, I know that uh, you are interested in nursing as well. 
So uh, do you have any questions for Alison or any interest about this position? What's it like to be a nurse? Like, Can you say that again? Oh. What's it like to be a nurse there? What's it like to be a nurse there? Um, so my experience, I didn't really have that many experiences with the nurses in the first hospital. I was in two hospitals. Um, the first hospital, I'm trying to think, was like a lot of surgeries I saw. So it was mostly doctors. And then the second hospital, the nurses. And they really seemed to run the floor a lot, which I know is common in, in American hospitals. Like they are, they are in charge. They are running around. Um, even if I couldn't understand everything they were saying, like I could tell that they were like, they were bossing around telling the doctor like what they need to do. Um, and if anything, I don't know the, the, the camaraderie of all the nurses. I don't know if it was just cause I was there or if, if, if it's like, just always a thing in Vietnam, but they were having a great time in the, um, the nursing break room, like always having fun. At least it seemed to me. Um, uh, and then always, I mean, again, I don't know if this is normal behavior or not since I was there, but they were very, very generous towards me. Um, they'd always bring me food in the morning and make me try different things. And not a lot of them spoke English, but they'd be like, Oh, come eat, come eat. And I'd be throwing different things that I don't know what they are. And I'd eat them. And I'd be like, all right, this is, this is good. What is this? Write it down. I want to go buy some. Um, I guess something that I take away from it now being in nursing school in the U S is you really kind of, you're able to compare some of the, the practices, um, stuff like simple giving injections and, and I guess other things like sterility techniques, um, because you know, US is just the, the sterility standards are like the highest, they should be the highest in the world um, compared to like Vietnam where some things are maybe fall under, like aren't necessarily up to the standard or I'm not sure how to say it. Like some things aren't deemed as important as other things and certain techniques. I don't know if that's like just learning differences, um, but just kind of comparing, comparing and contrasting um, procedural things, but then also like communication between the staff, stuff like that, if that answers your question. <laughs> yes. Yeah, lovely. Um, one feel free to ask uh, any of guest speakers here if you have any more questions. And yeah, and you know, like Amber uh, Einstein um, has one thing: information is not knowledge. And the only source uh, of knowledge is experience. You need experience to gain wisdom. I think it's like sort of like kind of like take away from what I have heard from three of you. And now when looking back at your internship, how do you think you have grown uh, after having that experience, Martin? Um, so, well, I just wanted to say something related to the last question. Um, Cause I had something, well, kind of similar. I was doing mostly um, writing reports, writing for uh, social media, um, and it was something that where I didn't have full well, contact with with the kids that were um, being held by this this organization. So um, I remember I think it was my first or second week, uh, and they told me, you know, these kids that come every day to here, um, they also want to learn English, and do you want to teach them English? And I was like. I've never, I've never taught before, and English is not my, it's not even my, my native language. So <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I, I'm sure I can do it. So I, I started like looking up how to teach, you know, like basic, basic stuff. At the time, I, I remember they asked me this because at the time, the a group of students, a group of kids, um, were going to uh, Singapore, 
um, they were invited by um, a, a high school in Singapore to to one event, um, and then they so they needed they needed to like English they needed to practice practice their English. So uh, I remember I started teaching them, and um, maybe a week after that, they were like, "Can you teach us Spanish as well?" It's like sure let's do it <laughs> let's do it why not and uh it was it was so nice like it was my first time teaching and um i think i i was a bit afraid in the beginning but then by the second week i was super comfortable they were super nice and i think they it, it was useful for them and i i definitely learned a lot as well so that was um, a great experience and then to answer the, the next question you, you said, um, I think that this experience in Vietnam definitely made me realize that I want to um, work somewhere where I, where I have a very close relationship or contact with the people that are benefiting from, from this. So either the nonprofit profit sector, um, well, right now I'm working for the government again, uh, but I'm working at a, at a different institution that works uh, much closer with, um, with people, basically with uh, it. So it's, I'm working at the Ministry of Industries and we're helping people, you know, develop their, their products, um, industrialize their, whatever they're doing. And it's very rewarding. And I, I, th I think that's something I learned in Vietnam because Prior to that, I didn't have any experience with like working closely with people. And so that's that's something I I think I learned and I realized in Vietnam. I, I confirmed what I was suspect suspecting. <laughs> yeah. One unexpected. Yeah. Okay. So how about you, uh, Ian? How do you think this internship has changed you? So I'd also like to also um, answer the previous question about difficulties first. Um, so one of the difficulties that I faced, um, I think there's oftentimes, there are some miscommunications, even though everyone in my office spoke English. Um, there are some times where I might say something or they might say something, but we interpreted like what their meaning, we interpreted their instructions differently or they interpreted my answer in a different way. Um, so I think one of the difficulties there was just trying to make sure that we both understood what we were trying to do or we understood a certain task. Um, another difficulty I had faced, um, which in a way was also a great opportunity, um, I actually had a lot of, um, I was actually given a lot of responsibility uh, at this office as an intern. So for example, um, we had one group of students from Thailand visit. This was uh, this was in July 2016, and my supervisor at the time she was busy with some other meetings. And um, well, my my job was to present the university, go through some presentations. Um, but my supervisor was supposed to basically accompany them, take them around the city, entertain them. And since she was busy, she said, "Ian, you're in charge." I'm giving you no instructions, just do it. Just make, make sure they have a good time. And so um, I remember I'm walking with this other Vietnamese uh, volunteer student. Um, she was a little bit younger. She was a few years younger than I was. And so because I was older, she would defer to me um, as the person in charge. And I remember after taking them to lunch, um, I just decided let's take them over to the uh, War Remnants Museum um, because it was a few blocks away from our university. But then when we got there, I realized, uh, um, so the Vietnamese student, she's talking to the, um, the security guard and he's saying, we're closed for lunch. We're not going to be open until two o'clock PM. And she kind of looks at me, cause I mean, I understood as well, like we're closed for lunch. She kind of looks at me um, and doesn't really know how to respond or know, know what to do. So I basically take charge of this group of 20, 25 or so um, Thai students and their professor. And I decide, let's go over to this local coffee shop here um, we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll just sit down, relax, have some co coffee for an hour. And, um, I kind of just decided that right on the spot. Um, and so 
they had a good time. And then later we saw them in the museum and then we took them back to their guest house and they had a great trip. But um, a lot of other similar thing, events happen where it's like, Ian, you're in charge, make a decision, do something. You, even though you're an intern, do something, you're in charge, it's up to you to decide how to get this done, how to execute a plan. Um, so while that was difficult, it was also, um, it was also a great opportunity to get, gain some experience in uh, just decision making. Mm, thank you, Ian. And then, um, what, um, yeah. oh yeah, so your question, um, um, what was the other question? Yeah, I mean, uh, I just asked you like, uh, how do you think this internship has changed you? Oh, it definitely opened um, my perspectives. I mean, even though I'm half Vietnamese, it definitely opened, it, it helped me understand more of the Vietnamese professional um, culture and helped me to compare the US and Vietnamese um, business cultures. Um, additionally, just being in a different, well, in a different uh, professional working environment, um, I, I was definitely able to take some of those, um, uh, what's the right word, um, ability to work with others, people, um, let's say people of a different culture, um, maybe a different professional setting or a bit, uh, business culture, and take some of those problem solving skills and apply it to where I work today. Yeah, I love that message. From Allison, I love your friendliness and possibility by connecting with people and ha to have a good connection uh, bond uh, with the locals. And uh, for Martin, I love your flexibility. And I think I have the, uh, the message um, um, that among um, a broader staff always remind the upcoming interns about the expect the unexpect, uh, the unexpected. You never know, but like maybe when you intern in Vietnam and like you 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 broaden your horizons, like uh like Ian have just shared just now as well. I love that. And oh, I know that you have the uh, grants or a uh, scholarships from your school to intern in Vietnam, right, Ian? And how you you how did you get it? Uh, yes, that's correct. So I funded my internship um through a university grant. So um, Tulane University, they offer grants. They have lots of funding for students to do additional research and other professional academic or professional development. And I had received um, what is called a Gordon Summer Fellowship from Tulane University. Um, basically this fellowship was used to, um, basically uh, it's a summer fellowship. Um, I applied to my university, wrote a two page statement of purpose describing my goals for um, completing this internship, what I hoped, uh, what I hoped to gain from it, um, and then what the grant money would be used for. Um, and so I received this fellowship and I used it to pay for all my expenses, airfare, um, my host family, um, um, what else, visa processing, other miscellaneous expenses. Hmm. Okay, so like uh, funding from the school also one of the source you can looking for. And uh, in uh, with a broader, we also have a Vietnamese heritage scholarship for uh, Vietnamese um, American students. For more information, you can check it out on our website. And due to the limit, uh, limited time, I just have one more question for um, you three. Uh, so, do you have any tips uh, you would like to share with the upcoming interns? Like, what should be prepared before deciding to study abroad? Like the skills, knowledge, and attitude. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, I remember writing something about expectations for Ma after coming back. So I'm kind of just going to reference that. And I know you kind of already mentioned, I kind of expect the unexpected, but I, I remember when it was student exchange, or if, if you guys still make every intern write a letter to themselves before they start the internship, I remember going in and being like, look, I don't know how like, everything's probably not going to go my way. Just kind of approaching the day with a positive attitude. And then do not expect or don't compare everything to your home country because if you do that it's just first of all just going to put you in a negative mindset and that's no way to to go about traveling at all because 
things are different. And so doing that, um, not comparing and then going in with like relatively few expectations, like you have a good framework of how you would like it to go, but be, be flexible and, um, kind of try and see the positives where things might not go so well, um, will really help you have the best experience. Yeah, thank you, Alison. Tips for um, to manage your expectations. Do you have for you, Martin? Um, I think I agree with what Alison said, because to be honest, I didn't have expectations like at all. Before going to Vietnam, I only knew what I was going to be doing as a job, but I, I mean, as, a, as an internship, but I didn't know anything about like the food, the, the, the culture or anything. And I think that was like the, a way to be surprised with everything that happens and take everything that happens as a, I don't know, as a blessing kind of, you know, like, uh, you're open to everything you you don't yeah I, I i remember that i people were asking me before going to vietnam so like what have you done your research like what is this country like and i was like i have no idea i'm just gonna leave it like i'm just gonna experience it and then and then we'll see and i think that was great that was a like a good approach mm. thank you martin uh, is there anything you want to add, Ian? Um, yes, yeah, so I definitely agree with Allison and Martin. You need to be flexible. Um, whatever you, whatever your expectations are, thing there are going to be things that change. There are going to be things that you completely unexpect for good and for bad. Um, and so, for example, an example of for good. So I was living with a host family, which. Um, a broader slash student exchange Vietnam found for me. And it turns out like, ironically, where I lived happened to be across, my, um, my mom, my mother's childhood friend happened to live across the street from where my host family was. Completely ironic, completely, I don't know how it happened in a city of like eight to 10 million people. I happened to be in district three, right across the street from my mother's best friend's house. Um, so she would actually meet me once a week and she would take me to different parts of the city. And uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for that opportunity because I never thought that would have, I, I just never expected it. Um, so obviously there are going to be um, difficulties that you face when interning in a different country, if you're in a new culture, um, you might have some culture shock, but at the same time, you're also going to have unexpected things that are, um, that are good. Um, one other uh, one other piece of advice I might add is, especially for um, like American students, if you're looking for funding or if you're looking to plan an internship, uh, start early. Give yourself a few months, especially if you're looking for funding opportunities to get um, to write out, let's say, grant applications um, and whatnot. I find that this stuff takes a lot longer than you might expect. Mm. Yeah, thank you for your valuable tips and for the upcoming interns. Yeah, thanks a lot. I mean, I still got goosebumps when I, uh, yeah, I know this is the second time for me to listen to this story about your mom's friend. Yeah, from the house you have. Oh my God, just incredible. Like we have faith to, to me, like we are, we are all here now. Oh, lovely. I mean, it's and, completely yeah. fake. I don't know. I don't know what else to call it. Mm. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, this is the last question we have for, for you guys on this talk. And please give all of us a round of applause. Yeah. Um, before we uh, end our talk, on behalf of everyone here, I would like to express our sincere gratitude for your attendance and for your sharing your experiences, knowledge would really inspire and motivate, not only for students, but also for, for us, uh, a broader team, to pursue uh, opportunities uh, to study or intern overseas. And once again, thank you for joining us today. And now we'll head back to our host today, Julie. 
Yeah, right. So thank you, Moon, Alison, Martin, uh, Ian, and also Ming for the question that you asked, Alison. And I really had a lot of wow moments when listening to your experiences in Vietnam. And I have to admit that <laughs> I really miss you know, like running the in-person programs and hopefully we can do it next year. And then due to the limited time, so uh, Ming, I know that you are interested in nursing uh, internship. So uh, I'm sending you a file uh, to be more detailed about the session today. The slide. Okay. So, um, if you are thinking about planning for your GoNAM trip in 2022, so what should you keep in mind? Of course, it should be your safety first. And I would like to update you some good news about traveling to Vietnam. Um, currently, the fully vaccinated rate in the two biggest cities in, uh, like Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City has signal plan for reopening the border. And um, they is so happy that now, if you want to travel from the US to Vietnam, we have a direct flight. And yesterday was a very special day, marking the first batch of international visitor coming to Vietnam. And our government, the Vietnamese government, they had a plan to fully open the border uh, next summer by June, 2022. So if any of you wanna come back, Yeah, and uh, with the current information we got, uh, if you are interested in intake, yes, yeah, so we would advise you to do it remotely. You can either do part-time or full-time remote internship kind of to gain the experience. And then from June, 2022, the in-person internships are more ready. And if you did a remote internship in general intake, then you also want to apply for the in-person internships, then what we can support you with 500 USD fee waiver um, for your in-person internships uh, next summer. And uh, for uh, any students with a Vietnamese heritage, then you are eligible for um, uh, a scholarship offered by a broader uh, up to 250 USD. Mm. And I that we can, you know, stay um, in touch and keep each other updated. And um, whenever you would like to get any uh, information about your interested field internship, please contact us. Yes, you can send an email or you can uh, I message or WhatsApp this number. And for more, you know, like uh, deep, then uh, I encourage you to book a one on one talk uh, with a broader staff so we can understand your needs and uh, what you expect. Uh, for your placement, for your internship. Yeah, next slide. Uh, you can move to the next slide. Yeah, so that's pretty much for today. Today and I would like to do a quick wrap up and reminder for the next session. Uh, so today we had a very great talk in Vietnam about a day in the life in Vietnam, uh, a life especially in the like when we co is it with the COVID nineteen, how it would be like in Vietnam. And I'm very excited if our alumni, if you are available, you can uh, come and join us. And uh, for me, I think uh, it is also very um, an informative session to share with you about regulations in Vietnam uh, regarding COVID-19 situation. Um, yeah, so I expect like we can see each other again um, in this session or maybe like physically uh, meet each other in, our, in Vietnam or in uh, your countries. Yes. And uh, yeah, 
please stay connected via other social media so you get a lot of reminder about the upcoming sessions. And uh, I'm very thankful that you guys spend time to be here, sharing stories and like, reconnect with each other. And uh, I'm also very happy to see Ming. I think this is the like, second time you are here. Um, and I really hope that a brother can, you know, can be a source of support or a source of assistance for you if you do have any questions about Vietnam or about internship opportunities in Vietnam. Yes. Okay, so I guess uh, it is a wrap uh, for today's session. Thank you and see you soon. Cảm ơn bạn và hẹn gặp lại. Yeah, and I know all of you based in the US except for me and Moon. So I would like to say good night uh, to Alison, um, Ian, Martin, and, and Ming. Yes, and have a good day to Moon. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Yes. Thank you very much. All right, mm, stay safe, everyone. Us. Yes. Yeah, have they a good say. Mm. All right. You bye all bye. have a good day. Bye bye. Bye. bye.